Hi, I'm Craig Phillips, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own child's novelty car bed. The size and design is up to yourself, but sometimes you're dictated by the size of the mattress. This particular one I've based my design on is 1400 millimeters long by 700 millimeters wide. So make sure you do yourself a drawing with your sizes before you start building. Now, the tools you're going to require to build your car bed is a router, orbital sander, belt sander, jigsaw, handsaw, screws, set square, cordless drills, track saw or a circular saw, and some clamps. Now I'm going to build most of the bed out of MDF. It's a standard sheet, it's 8 foot by 4 foot wide, and it's 18 millimeters thick. Really easy to cut and easy to work with, and it's quite rigid as well. Now, once you've purchased your mattress and you know the sizes of it, you can draw your dimensions. The mattress I'm using is a standard one for a child's bed, 1400 millimeters long by 700 millimeters wide. So I've done my drawing of the car, allowing a small 160 millimeters nose for the front of the car, and then the back, an 80 millimeter hangover. So I'm gonna mark that up on the actual sheet. Marking 160 millimeters, which is gonna be the nose of my car. Then I'm going to put my tape on the mark and measure out for 1400 millimetres, which is my mattress. And then the tail end of that is a further 80 millimetres, how I've drawn this. So the overall measurement on this is going to be about 1580 millimetres. You can adjust yours slightly, but it has to be built around the mattress size, of course. So once I've got my marks on there, I now have to draw freehand the shape of the bed. Now this is where you can be a little bit creative. And I'm just going to slowly start to draw the back end of the tail, coming down in the center here, the lowest point where the child can climb up and climb into the bed, and then slope it down really fast at the front to give it that kind of sports car look. That's looking about as close as I can get it to my drawings at the moment. What I'm going to do next is jigsaw the shape of this out. Once I've done that, you can easily sand down and nip off any little edges if it's necessary. Now, wherever you cut in any form of large sheet like this, make sure it's clamped down safely. I've put a large plank across there and two quick lamps either end holding it into place securely. I'm going to be cutting the MDF, so of course I'm using my dust mask and safety goggles. One last thing to check, whenever you're cutting a pattern out like this, always make sure it's nice and clear underneath and you're not going to cut into any of your bench. Here we have our shape of our car bed. All we need to do now is polish these edges off. Once you've cut it out with the jigsaw and you're happy with the shape, then you can belt sand all the edges just to get them nice and smooth on there. To make it a little bit safer as well, I've screwed a couple of battens either side of it here to hold it upright and also use the clamp on one end so it's nice and sturdy now. So now you're completely satisfied with the shape of this, you can use it as a template to cut your second side. So that's our two side sections of the car bed cut out. I've belt sanded them and got my shape just how I want it. But the very edge of it is quite square still. So what I'm going to do now is router it to create this effect where in my opinion, it's a lot more child friendly. Perfect. 
So the next stage is to cut the front and the back of the car. We've got our two side pieces cut. The back section is a rectangular like this, again from the 18mm MDF. This time I've cut it 710mm wide because the mattress itself is 700mm. I want a small bit of clearance. The two sides are going to be fitted here, which will hold them together. I've routed the edge off here, again to make it more smoother for the children. What I'm going to focus on now is the front nose of the car. This is going to be three separate sections, all at 710mm wide but I'll draw the width of them on here. Whilst I cut them, I'll put them together and that'll make it a bit more clearer. The front section is gonna be 200 millimeters wide by 710. Just here, we want another piece at about 80 millimeters wide. Uh, sorry, 100 millimeters wide in there. Again, the width of it will be 710 millimetres for that clearance. Okay, so now we have the three sections I spoke about for the front. This is the very underside of the actual car itself. The sides are going to be here. This upright is hardly going to be seen, but it's going to serve a purpose. And then the front nose is going to sit on an angle like this to create that aerodynamic effect. But we don't want it flush on the edge. We want to create a little bit of a point on the front, like that. So, we know it's 710 millimeters wide. We find our center of that, which is 355. That's our center. I'm gonna step back, let's say, 50 millimeters, put a mark here. Same again from the front, 50 millimeters. Use the edge of my saw, just draw the line from point to point. Same again the opposite side. And that's the kind of soft point I want to create for the front of the car. <laughs> So while he's still clamped down there, I'm just going to use my belt sander and take the edge off that cut. And that's our three sections we need. We've got the bottom piece, we've got the upstand, and then we've got the nose, very front of the car, which is going to be fitted on a bit of an angle like this. You can picture it now with the two sides of the car bed, either side there, mattress in the centre. Now I'm going to set the upstand back about 110 millimetres. Mark here, 110, 110 there. I'll line it up over the top. Just draw a little line, front and back. And that way I can drill some pilot holes in here now and it'll be easy to screw it from the back. Apply a small amount of glue. Place the upstand along the side of my lines. I'm going to use a quick clamp, hold it in position before I screw it. Same again, the opposite end. That way, it holds it into position for me and I can screw in from the back edge.
my screw on the end. Okay, so now we have the bottom nose of the front of the car. We've got the upstanding position. This one is going to be sitting on the top like this, but we won't be fitting it just yet. What we need to do now is get our two sides in place, fit our back so it holds it into position, and then we can stick the front section to it. Now, assembling it on your own can be a little bit tricky. So what I've done was put a little batten again on the desk here. I'm going to hold it up here, and if my good lady, Mrs. DIY, would like to come in and hold that nice and tight and upright for me. I've got the back section of the bed, which is going to be fitted on first along here. So if you hold that nice and flush, I'm just going to pack that off the floor a tiny little bit, a couple of offcuts of old pallet wood. Take it off just a fraction. Now I did make a mark earlier on the back of here and that's where the top of the actual mattress is going to be to give me my overall 1400 millimetres which I require. So I'm going to butt that up against it. You squeeze that up there please Laura. Excellent. And when I've got him looking upright like this, a little bit closer, that's it. I'm just going to take my pencil and draw a line both sides of this 18 millimeter MDF. I'm going to lay him down and then I'll drill a couple of pilot holes inside there. That way by drilling in the center of my two lines, I know when I screw it in from the back, it's going to go right in the middle of this piece of MDF. I'm going to put a small line of glue just right bang in where that line is. And again, it's just lining this up where we've cut this nice little kind of spoiler shape here in the nose to the front of the car. It's just lining it up where it's going to look good. And remember, we have got our top section which is going to sit on an angle just like that. So we create that aerodynamic nose on the front of the car. Now, for the opposite section. Which we're going to do the same on this side. And of course, we're going to mark them up along there with the pencil on the both sides at the same time. Take it down, drill in the pilot holes, glue them up, offer it into position and screw it firmly into place. Quite often we drill holes through the wood called a pilot hole to stop the wood splitting. That's this section here. But then we also want to hide the head of the screw. So we use a countersink drill bit, which is this one, and it has a bevel and edge along the top. So when we drill our hole through the wood, you continue it and it bores out the top section just like here. So when that screw is driven into the wood, it goes in deeper. Later on when the whole construction is completed, because we've countersunk the drill holes, we can simply fill them in, let them dry, sand them over, and when it's painted, you won't see the screws. The slats are gonna sit on top of these two uh, plain pieces of timber, the 50 millimeters square. They're gonna be glued and screwed on to both sides there. If we just prop that up there, Laura, and I'll prop this side up as well. A little bit underneath there. That's looking level. Probably one more underneath that. I'm going to mark right the way along the top. A little bit under the bottom there. And there as well. So when I move these battens out the way, we've got our line there to drill through. And again, I'm going to drill them in from this side just to countersink them holes so when they're covered we don't see them and that glue should really suck into that MDF and stick to it 
perfect. So now we know once that glue dries, them large screws are in there, that batten there is going to dry absolutely solid because that's going to take the weight of the slats spanning across and then of course the mattress is going to sit on top of that. Now for the top nose. Okay, we want this on a bit of an angle maybe. How's that look to it? Not the same that side. Okay. There we go. That'll make them nice and aerodynamic on the front. The next stage is to cut this plain timber, 95 millimeters wide by 20, which is gonna sit spanning across the two buttons as slats. So the slats wanna be 710 millimeters. Quick mark there. Using the square edge on my handsaw. these down. So that is 11 slots fitted in the bed with about a 30 millimeter gap to let the air circulate around. You can screw them down, but they're very, very solid and it is only a small mattress, so they are okay to leave like that. The next stage is the wheels. And I've got a little trick. I don't want to teach you how to reinvent the wheel. However, I've got a great way of measuring one up and cutting one. Our wheels are going to be about 330 millimeters. They're going to bring the bed off the floor a fraction but for me to cut a perfect circle like that, I've got myself an off-cut piece of wood. I've drilled a hole in it and I've put a screw in it as a clearance hole so it's nice and loose. And then I've also screwed another screw in nice and tight to the spiky edges there. I'm going to screw that down into my MDF board so it moves. Press that down and create a circle by scratching it into the surface. <laughs> Now that's your perfect circle to cut out if you're going to use a jigsaw. However, if you have a router, there's another alternative. Of course, you can use a plunge router bit, plunging down, which will cut into the MDF. And then we have this little bar with a radius arm that we can stick into the centerpiece and create a circle with that. What I'm going to do is drill a small pilot hole in here to catch the spike. Make sure he's in. Start cutting. All I need to do now is sand round the edges, then router them. It'll be perfect. Three more to go. Now using the orbital sander, you can really polish off them edges, lovely and smooth. All we've got to do now is fit them. Now I've propped the base of the bed up, probably about 40 millimetres with an off-cut piece of timber. I'm going to place the wheel round about the centre part of this arch here. Drill the pilot hole right in the centre and screw them in. Nice and tight. Solid. All I need to do now is fill all of these holes, get my sand down, and it's ready to paint. So that's your child's novelty car bed. If you choose to paint it the way I have, make sure it's a water-based paint and it's certified child-friendly. And if you want to see some more how-to videos, please visit the website, silverlinetools.com.